Okay, so I'm going to just jump in and uh, do a little bit of uh, modelling on some of the assets. Um, so I've uh, been looking at, uh, obviously we have PureRef open and PureRef has got the two images in that I'm using, but if you don't have PureRef or two screens, a um, little bit of a trick here is to, uh, let's do control N, new, let's just show you this. So I just tear open a window panel here and one here. Change these both to image editor. And then you can uh, load in your image that you've got. So I've got uh, my images here. So I'll put the top one in this. And I can put the other one in this. And then I've got my reference images uh, to hand on screen. I can slide this backwards and forwards. So I can get more screen real estate if I need to. Um, just makes it a little bit easier for me to see and it looks identical to my pure ref scene so just something that's a little bit useful uh, i got that from one of the car modeling tutorials so it's uh, it's fairly good for uh, having lots of reference material and you can flick through them uh, so you could load them all up and then you could just run through these so if i want i can sw switch them around just by accessing them whichever way I want to do. Okay so starting with this, uh, this is the cube that we have in uh, Blender. Uh, so it will set up. All I'm going to do is use this cube to create this. So what we've got is we've got basically a cube shaped bottom with a couple of bevels. Chop the chamfer the edges off and then some beveling on the top and then I'm going to create the uh, the circle from the actual uh, from the cube itself using a the loop tools add-on. I'll show you how that puts in. So let's go to a side view. I'd like to model in this. Uh, holding down uh, control gets us to snap to grid. Remember uh, when we're snapping we want to have absolute grid snap on if we're going to use grids. So let's just uh, bring this down to something like that. So we've got our base, go into edge mode, just select these edges. Oops. And then I'm just going to hit the bevel key and I'm just going to bevel those in. It's just going to give us that a chamfer, which is fairly good. And we're going to go face mode, select the face on top, and then I'm going to offset that in. I'm going to press E to extrude up. I'm using Z uh, as the axis. So again, we could go into a side view. We could use the move key control. Just make sure we're getting some correct spacing between those, those two bits. Um, and once again, then I'm going to go in, press the offset key and just offset in to fairly let's just press S to scale just bring that in a little bit more just eyeballing that up okay so uh, the add-on we're using is uh, under preferences if you just type loop you'll see that the mesh loop tools enable that I've changed this tab category so this is going to appear on the side uh, so uh, as you can see we've got these on the side so it's going to appear on the side, and I've renamed it from Edit to Loop Tools. So it just uh, sits there in the Loop Tools menu. So pressing N just brings that open. Uh, let's just open that up a little bit wider. Loop Tools, there it is. And then we can do some bits with this. So the idea is that you select the face, and then you press the circle, and voila, job done. Um, so there's probably a little bit more that we need to do. Um, I could, we could uh, certainly, we've got a little bit of uh, rotation going on there. So let's uh, use the rotate tool just to bring that back a little bit. So that's a little bit more. And if we added more subdivisions, 
we would get a much smoother cube going through there uh, and that, that would be something that we might want to do before we start. Um, so let's just roll back up a little bit and uh, we could take these points before we start. Uh, let's just do this and we could scale those in a little bit so let's do them let's do it like this and just to just bring them a little bit more uh, average them out a little bit better may well be an add-on for that but I'm not sure what it would be uh, and then I could add some loop cuts in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the faces on the top and the bottom which is that one just press X and go faces so there we've got that and then if I go control R I can just add these in okay so that's added a little bit more um, uh, technically we could probably add some more in there as well so we could add depending on how many we want as this is a look dev, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So now, if we select those, uh, if we select all of the vertexes and press circle, boom, there we go. Much tidier, looking good. And then it's a simple case of going to edge mode and E and Z, and we've got our first sort of ellipse coming up. And like I said, uh, this is probably two objects that's been you know, molded together. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, so again, uh, looking at this, this wants to be on a 0.5 scale. So let's just uh, control, let's bring that to about halfway up. So it's half of what the other lips are. In fact, let's, let's take the all of these and again let's just drop these down something like that okay I'm liking that and then pressing alt this gets the selects the edge loop and this is a loop now because we did the extrusion so that works well for us we can then uh, do another extrude okay and then right mouse click and then s and we can just scale that in. Um, again, probably different ways of doing that, but I just found that that's an easier way to do it. And then one more time, I'm going to press uh, extrude Z, E, Z, and bring this up all the way. And then we're thinking about the size. So we will say maybe one, two, three. We can probably change that. And then S to scale that in. That's giving us the top of that thing together. And then I'm going to go uh, E, Z again, just to bring that up. And then we want that to be the same sort of height. So if we go Control R, we can put in an edge loop there. Control R, put in an edge loop here. We could have done this as an extrusion, but Let's just see how this goes. Okay, let's just alt, bring that up, bring these up a little bit more. Okay, and then control R, let's bring that in, make it nice and tight. And then let's select the faces, let's scale those in. Uh, press SZ, scale it up, and then just move that down a little bit. And again, we can do the same at the top of here. Uh, so let's go just move this one, Alt, maybe down, and then let's select this ring and S to scale. Ah, undo that. I want both of these rings. To scale that in, and we're probably 
out there. Cool. And then let's just select that. And let's go right mouse click. And sorry, let's go face fill or alt F. Alt F would do that. I'm not sure whether that is the type of um, ending I want for that. But I'll come back to that later. Cool. So there we go. Traffic cone in place. Okay, so this obviously needs a lot of uh, work to smooth things out. So let's just uh, just select all of those. Right mouse click and uh, shape smooth. So we should start to see that that's uh, looking a bit better. We'll probably put a cut in to make that work a little bit better for us there. And we probably need to make the tops a bit That's looking pretty good. Pretty good. So let's just put an edge loop in the bottom here. Let's just drag that down. Okay, and then let's scale that in. Oops. Let's actually make another edge loop. In fact, let's uh, Control B bevel that. Uh, so we just put the bevel on the edge. Uh, so I want the one in the middle and scale that one down and that's just going to give me that little lip that I want and then I can actually select the edge here and bevel that oops control B so let's just go to the region on that let's select uh, this edge the same This edge, do the same. Uh, we're just going to go around and do these bevels now. So let's get uh, that one, that one. So we want shift, shift and alt, shift and alt, shift and alt. And then let's just take the bevels here. See how that control B, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's what I want. <clears throat> um, no, let's, yes. Yeah, so we've done that, so this is what we want. We want these to be beveled. Yes, 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 yes. All of those, control B, just give it a little bit of a pull. Thank you very much. And then, by the magic, uh, we've got some good work going there. So what I'm gonna do is add a subdivision sub modifier. Surface modifier, just to make sure we've got this. Ah, so these are still so we, we made this as smooth, so uh, what we want to do is go into here. Uh, so we need to we need to smooth divide those faces. Uh, so I'm going to go edit mode, faces, I'm just going to select all of those faces. Let's just select all of those. Caught some others, if you just want to get rid of using control, to deselect. Then let's go right mouse click, shade smooth. And when we come out of here, we should see that that's picked that up. So that will render a lot better for us. Okay, so uh, looking at that, this probably looks like it's bigger. Again, the beauty of this, the way that we've modeled it, is we can go in, and we can just grab all of these bits in the middle. Go to the top view and then just scale those out a little bit more. Let's drop to the side view. I'm not, it's not even done too much at all, that so it's perfect. There we go. 
Okay, so that's given us a cone. That's given us, uh, probably need to just uh, grab, looking at this, we've got these, these bits here that need to be just solved. So let's just, um, let's see what we've got here. Don't know why they're not doing it. Probably need these faces to be shaded smooth, but let's just add a let's just add a loop in there just to bring that up. Just make that look a little bit better. Cool. And again, this probably needs the same. So let's go into this interfaces. Out. Okay. So in shading mode, and we're gonna have to set up uh, a little cut first. Let's just let to layout. Um, we want to just bring this um, in. my edit mode. Oh, tools is actually in there as well, which is pretty cool. Um, 